I, uh, my name is Silent. I'm really bad at doing intros on first episodes of anything, but I decided I wanted to make a series and start up YouTube again because I had viewed a show called Sliders from 1995. I sort of became obsessed with it in childhood. To the level that I was allowed to skip out of school to watch the series on the Sci-Fi Channel when they had a marathon on, which was fun. Uh, it also, unironically, I formed a basis of my political opinions. You'll see why throughout the series. Earlier this year, late last year, I can't actually remember which, I was on a Facebook page for Sliders fans, and they suggested that the series was, like, apolitical, combining with news stories that I had seen around the same time, that Tracy Torme was trying to do a reboot, but being an American libertarian, and he thinks that it would be difficult, something like SJW liberal campaigns, some malarkey like that, would make the series difficult, if not impossible to do. But I believe, and what I hope to show throughout this whole series, is that the original series is, by today's standards, SJW liberal malarkey, and that the creator also just doesn't understand his own creation. It does seem like at the time, though, it would have a general, like, American libertarian stance, not presently, but from the 50s. It has some obvious politics of that group, but by modern standards, it'd be like libertarian socialist or left-wing libertarianism, if not that. And so, on to me personally, this is hopefully a one-time thing. My area of expertise is actually a lot... Uh, I graduated both from Purdue University and Indiana University with degrees in six subjects and focuses of each. They were, one, women's studies with focus on racism and oppression, two, philosophy with a focus on communism, three, medical ethics with a focus on transhumanism, four, religious studies with a focus on Eastern religions and new religious movements, five, sociology with a focus on social problems, which is a field, not just a vague collection of political ideas, and six, international relations with a focus on terrorism and terrorist movements. There will be more to come as the important information, but it'll come up as the needs are relevant for the video. Hi, my name is Hanasius, and unlike Silent, I'm good at giving introductions. Uh, I have never seen Sliders until today. In fact, I didn't even see the entirety of the first episode. They're just like, hey, we're going to discuss the first world that appears in this show, and we want your thoughts on it. So I've only seen the first 20 whatnot minutes of it. I don't have any expertise. I'm just an undergrad student of Eastern religion, and that is literally it. Ahoy! They call me Koki. I feel like I'm adequate at introductions. I have seen the Slider series once with Silent Before, but also a couple of episodes when I was a kid. Not nearly to the extent that they did. My qualifications are pretty much nothing. I'm pretty active in the alternate history community, and that's mostly why I was dragged on board. I'm kind of with Silent. I feel as though maybe the politics got a bit more to the right over time, but generally speaking, a lot of it does seem like... It wouldn't fly in modern right-wing quote-unquote libertarian circles and hopefully we'll have a fun series together to the extent that all three of us will be there when one of us is missing you'll know so the show begins where the main character called uh, quinn mallory who i call q ball and is also called q ball in the series by rembrandt he tries to create an anti-gravity device but screws up and accidentally creates a wormhole to parallel existences there might be banter about this at a later date how you go from one to the other. But either way, he wants to explore what's on the other side, but he can't send the camera through because the wormhole he created messes with electronics. He shortly later creates a timer, which it does not interfere with. I posit it's immune because it's a part of the wormhole itself, so it's thus not affected. He does send inanimate objects through, like a basketball, a T-Rex, etc., so he knows that the worlds aren't, like, super deadly. I mean, they might be deadly, but they're not, like, burning this stuff up immediately or getting impaled or things like that. He wants to test it on an animal, specifically his cat Schrodinger, but decides that he would not be able to cope with that if Schrodinger dies, because it's his pet kitty cat. So he ends up going through himself, and then he lands on this world that we're going to discuss now. Well, before we go on to that, I just want to say there are analog cameras with timers. Doesn't have to be electronic. And also, he doesn't want to kill the cat. You could try a beta fish. A fern? I feel yeah. like jumping from basketball to human is a very big jump. I agree. As for the camera thing, it might be a lack of funds, his not knowing that they exist, where to get a hold of one. Oh no, those were bigger back in the day. Like, I'm talking about those little disposable cameras with Polaroids. The only electronic part is the flash. Yeah, okay. I, I'm i bad with history. This is why I brought Koki on. <laughs> 
Admittedly, I worked at Walgreens and people bought those cameras. That, that's literally the only reason I'm aware of them. But let's talk about this other world. It's one of the sillier ones, and it's one of the ones they open with. So I'm just going to go with some of the details that are a little different about the world. First thing that comes up, Radio Tripper, he's... Day spec tripper. Or Day Tripper on the radio. Uh, is speculating about this scientific theory called global cooling. And how, well, the AC certainly is making things kind of cool here. It's, it's kind of silly. They move on to traffic lights. Red means go. Green means stop. There's commentary on the radio how John F. Kennedy, or Jack Kennedy, does not want to run for another term. This is set in the 90s, so... 95, specifically. Yeah, and he said something along the lines of, if I began the day in bed with Marilyn, that's where I'd want to stay. So we're assuming that John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe, if these are the same people, are still alive. There's a big billboard advertising Elvis on tour. There's commentary on illegal immigration of Americans into Mexico. Day Tripper talks about how they're pursuing higher standard of living and good work. So the flow of immigration seems a little different from how we remember it. Vinyl beat CDs. This is actually somewhat prophetic. Actually, the trend of immigration was also somewhat prophetic. Now more Americans are going to Mexico than the other way around, but it's kind of prophetic because now vinyl does sell more than CDs, but I'm guessing it was supposed to be kind of absurd at the time to show this as another world. Henny here has some sort of unified theory on why this world is different, and I want to hear Henny talk right now. Okay, so the first thing that I really sort of tuned in on was the opposite traffic lights, and something that occurred to me is that in East Asia, Asia. Red is usually associated with yes, and green and blue is associated with no. And something that, when looking into this a bit more, is that the railroad system was the origin of the traffic light system that we use now. And something that came to mind as a potential explanation for this is possibly that, one, maybe the coolies had a bit more influence on the industry that they were working for. Maybe East Asia came to greater economic power earlier on and actually exported their own railroad system to the west so this would have carried over to our traffic signs Another thing that also came to mind is that Kennedy being president for so long and the economic problems and the emigration to Mexico and global cooling might all be connected through Cold War crisis leading to Kennedy being stated as dictator. Basically, like, yes, we have the term limit issue, but in a crisis, you could easily get a government to just out of necessity try to get rid of certain limitations in the Constitution that prevent law and order. And so Kennedy, who's known as one of the biggest Cold War leaders could have been seen as someone very good for trying to fix a lot of the problems there. He was very gung-ho about pushing American power during that. And so, yeah, like... Dictatorships often have a lot of economic stagnation, which may have led to a lot of people going to Mexico instead. This could also explain why it seems like a lot of cultural elements like Marilyn Monroe and whatnot are still relevant, and why vinyl might still be a big thing, etc. Heck, to my understanding, the technological developments in other countries played a huge role in why we searched the CDs in the first place, because even though they have worse sound quality than vinyl, CDs actually have the benefit of being a bit cheaper to produce produce and also you can carry them around easier in a Walkman or things like that. Without certain technological developments like that, people would probably still be using vinyl and CD might have trouble taking off, especially if there's a lot of economic protectionism in the US. This economic protectionism could also be connected to the global cooling thing because back in the day, a lot of scientists actually thought that the result of the Industrial Revolution could actually lead to uh, global cooling and it turned out to be the other way around. The idea to me is that if certain concerns about global warming are starting to emerge, the government might actually try to use global cooling as a way to dismiss certain concerns like that in a disinformation campaign. And through that, we would it wouldn't necessarily be real. I mean, I guess we could also explain it in some other way, like people have been using different types of technologies to power stuff that actually leads to making it so that the world cools instead. That seems a lot more far-fetched to me, but that is possible, and at least that doesn't mean changing the laws of physics somehow. My other thing, too, that I've been thinking is with this big sort of like cultural stagnation, you could see also that a lot of stars from earlier might still be relevant, like Marilyn Monroe might not have killed herself for some reason. I don't know why this would prevent Elvis from getting abducted by aliens, but who knows? That's my theory. 
I do think, and this is becoming a bit of a meta commentary on alternate history, because a lot of it does involve a certain degree of nostalgia. Alternate history is largely fan fiction about the past. And so when we're talking about Elvis not falling into the depressive slump that allowed him to cooperate with the aliens abducting him, or Marilyn Monroe kind of fell out of relevance and overdosed, in this kind of nostalgic society that would still be listening to Elvis, that would still like Marilyn Monroe. Oh, it's mentioned that Marilyn Monroe even though she'd be like pushing 70 in this timeline is a bit of a sex icon you know the vinyl and stuff it's sort of like this is a timeline where everything happened later JFK being dictator could be a cause for this stagnation. If you want to go for something that's a bit more recognizable to our America, he could have just gotten into politics much later, though he'd basically be Joe Biden at this point. And I will say, like, if we're talking about conceptually, the idea of this just being opposite, the idea that cooling is happening instead of warming, than the idea that, at least in the West, red being seen as a cooler color and green as a warmer color. I mean, obviously, it involves a completely different world, but I'd say that thematically it makes sense for things to be sort of turned on its head. That being said, I remember I looked into the history of red lights and green lights, and considering that it involved American railroad systems, I could see, you know, many Asian Americans having maybe a bit more input. They were present there. There are a lot of things that could be going on. If the world is in fact cooling, and this isn't a disinformation campaign, that also might be a factor as to why many Americans, and probably Canadians, which gets touched up on in a later episode, might want to immigrate to Mexico that might actually have a more temperate climate, whereas agriculture might be suffering north of the border due to cooling temperatures. There are a lot of different ways that it could be touched on, but the theme seems to be, if not nostalgia, then things happening later. JFK, later. Marilyn Monroe, later. Elvis, later. And vinyl later, even beating CDs, which were, at the time, the now. So I'll also do a political commentary to show that the show is, by modern standards, SJW, liberal bullshit. So he mentions global cooling, and the commentary, at least from the way I understand it, is a commentary on the uh, stupidity of various arguments in favor of and against global warming, but obviously taken to the satirical level. The AC has it so cold in here, no wonder nobody wants to come in and take their tops off specifically pointing to individuals talking about localized instances of temperature and declaring it as proof for their side, working both ways, like, wow, it sure is hot, global warming, or the opposing side. The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Of uh, national attention, and in, in, in case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the commentary on immigration. Like, we can't take for granted what Koki and Hennessy were saying because that speculation, I mean, it's fun speculation to be sure. I'm not dissing that, but it is just speculation. So we can only go by explicitly stated for the political commentary. Day Tripper suggesting that immigration, legal and otherwise, explicitly supporting illegal immigration is a good thing. Now, why do I think that this commentary of his is supposed to be taken at face value while the other one was hyperbole or satirical? Well, it's because he was doing a joke in the previous one, whereas in this one, he seems to be giving actual arguments for the position. He notes that people are searching to get a better job in life for themselves and their families, suggesting that it's always a good thing. Getting better paying jobs, similar stance, also good, basically for the same reasons, better job causes better life. He doesn't give into specifics or the trials and tribulations that are caused during immigration or as a result of it, uh, horrors people go through, but... You know, that's to be expected from a one-shot on a talk show, on a TV show, trying to rapidly tell us this is clearly a different universe. It's doubly true if immigration involves people trying to advance the quality of life for their children. In this case, although it's very, very subtle, it would also seem to be suggesting that anchor babies are good and should be praised as existing. And then for a section that we're going to do with every world, what about Puerto Rico? So... We've already speculated a couple different ways this world can come about. 
If global cooling is true, we don't know when it might have begun or how this could have come about, but if it's a lot of the same pressures that push people to immigrate to Mexico might push people to immigrate towards Puerto Rico. Farmhands, maybe not so much, but the economy might be doing a bit better if Puerto Rico were a bit more temperate. We might have refugees, people who've lost their jobs to this cooling environment. It's also worth noting that the Puerto Rican independence movement has declined since the 50s. With Americans being able to come in freely, tensions might be a bit higher. Granted, the physics are so different that it's hard to make this call, but the trend seems to be the world at least resembles ours. So I would say even if tensions are worse, Puerto Rico would still be a commonwealth of the United States. But Henny was talking about global cooling as disinformation, so... Henny, why don't you tell me what you think Puerto Rico is like in this alternate world? I have no idea. You tell me. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, under a Kennedy dictatorship, I think, if anything, the Puerto Rican statehood might be stronger. Because the Kennedys were generally good on civil rights. They were hard on communism, which would probably result in greater persecution of the Puerto Rican independence movement, which has generally leaned socialist. So in this case, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Puerto Rico as the 51st state under a Kennedy dictatorship. Thank you for listening. We will probably be revisiting this series for many, many more worlds. And I look forward to rambling at you in the future. Penny. Ciao. Ciao indeed. Have a good one.